Hey guys, this is the Bearded Guitarist. Thanks for checking out this video. Today we'll be learning four essential tips to improve your R&B playing on guitar. We'll be starting from a chord progression like this one. And we'll learn how to apply embellishments to these chords to make it sound more R&B, like this. So let's check this out in the close-up. So the first step is a basic one and it's make sure that you know in which key you're playing, what chords you're playing, but more importantly what degree they represent. Now for the sake of this video, to keep the thing simple and to make sure that we are all on the same page, I'm basically playing in C major. So everything we'll be uh, saying will be in the key of C major or A minor, which is the relative minor, so it's basically the same key. So what I'm assuming that you know already is the harmonization of the C major scale. So just going through a few degrees that we need, uh, we find on the first degree a C major 7, second degree D minor 7, third E minor 7, fourth F major 7, and the sixth degree is going to be A minor 7. Okay. The only other chord that we need, which is external to the key, is going to be a C sharp diminished 7. Okay. Which then we will move by three semitones to E diminished seventh, which is basically the same chord, just an inversion of the C sharp diminished seventh. So let's see what's the chord progression that we're gonna play. We're gonna play A minor seven, followed by E minor seven, going to F major seven, and finally D minor seven. So in terms of degrees, we are playing the sixth, the third, fourth and then second of C major. If we think about the degrees from an A minor point of view, which like we said it's the relative minor, so we look at the tonic being the A minor 7, so the first degree, moving to the 5 minor, flat 6 major 7, 4 minor. Okay, when we'll go to the C major 7 that would be the flat 3 major 7. Now, uh, we could just start playing the chords like I was doing in the intro, like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But to make it sound more R&B, we need to go into the second tip, which is let's add embellishments. Embellishments to these chords means basically hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now, we need to know where we can do the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, because not every chord can have the same type of hammer-ons. So basically, starting on the A minor 7, we can add the little finger on the 7th fret of the, uh, the high E string to play the 9th and play an A minor 9. So this is something that we can do because the B, which is the note that you are adding on the A minor 7, belongs to the key of C major or A minor. Okay, so this A minor 7 can be extended to A minor 9. Okay, from here we need to go to the next chord, E minor 7, and here we can't play the 9th in the same way. So we can't do this, for example, because if we do so, we add the F sharp, which is the ninth in E minor, which is going to be an external note that doesn't belong to the key of C major or A minor, okay? So we can't do this, which is very common, but not on the third degree. So what we can do instead, we can add the little finger doing a hammer-on here on the second string, which basically plays the fourth, the eleventh, and then maybe another one here, which plays the seventh. Okay, so you can do all these kind of embellishments, R&B embellishments, okay. Now from here we can go to the F major 7, and here yes, we can use the 9th, which is the G here on the 8th fret, and basically go a little bit later with the little finger, and if we want we can also do the same one string below, okay, and in this way we are going to play the 13th, okay. That's what we can do on the F major 7. So when we go then to the D minor 7, which is the second degree, we can finally play the 9. So we can do 
this little embellishment, so going with the second finger a little bit later, okay? Because this is the Dorian chord, so it has basically the major ninth, and we can do this. While we can't do this on the E minor 7, because that's the Phrygian chord, which has the flat 9, and we can't use a major 9 uh, instead of it, okay? So we can do this on the D minor 7, but not on the E minor 7. Let's hear the chord progression now with these embellishments. Sixth degree. already more interesting, more R&B in terms of feel with the chords. Now the third tip is learning an embellishment that works very well in R&B and Neo Soul and it works on the second degree and on the fourth degree. So in our key it's going to be D minor 7 and F major 7. Now this embellishment goes like this. Okay, so it's basically a bar on the 10th fret and then a little finger on the 12th and remove it. Okay, like hammer on pull off. Okay, now why this works well on both chords? Because if we look at the notes that we are playing, I'm basically playing an F major triad with the major seven, with the E, which is the major seven. So this is another way of playing the F major seven, okay? I'm just playing the same chord, literally an inversion of the same chord. Or another way of looking at this is why don't we put the D on the bass? D is already here when we play uh, the four notes at the bottom on the 10th fret. So if I play the D minus seven and then I extend my little finger here, or I just look at it this way, this is again a D minus seven with the ninth. So it's gonna be a D minor nine. The same kind of embellishment that you do when you play. D. So once more, when we play this, we are playing either F major seven or D minus seven. So they include basically the same notes. So that's why it works when you are here and when you're here. And this is a very common R&B and Neo Soul thing. Let's do it again slowly. Or, I'm just playing the usual hammer-ons that we saw before on F major seven and D minus seven, adding this part which is really, really cool. So let's add this embellishment to the chord progression, once on the F major seven, and then on the D minor seven. Now from here, let's move to the fourth tip. Let's try to add the external chord, the diminished seventh passing chord between the one C major seven and the D minor seven two. Now I made an entire video on this. So the reason why this works, it's basically the upper part of the secondary dominant of the D minor seven. So we are thinking that we are going to the D minor seven with its secondary dominant, A seven flat nine. We remove the A from the chord and the chord that we get in this way is going to be a C sharp diminished seventh. So if you want to know more about this rule, you can check out my entire video on this topic. And then you will find out that the same chord can be moved by three semitones and it's always going to be the same chord. Okay, just an inversion of itself. So something that we can do when we add a few embellishments, we can then pass through one C major seven, then C sharp diminished seven to reach the D minus seven. So this could be done this way, for example. So what did I do? I played F major 7, quickly a C major 7, C sharp diminished 7, going to D minus 7. But I could do it differently. I could do it, for example, uh, using the C sharp diminished seven, sliding it to E diminished seven, and then heading to D minus seven, like this. This is just a movement from C sharp diminished seven E diminished seventh and then D minus seven. Or again, I could use the embellishment that we were doing before 
on the F major 7, go to C as a triad rather than C major 7, I play a C triad, maybe doing an embellishment with the 6th here, little finger on the 10th fret of the B string. This could be seen as a C6 or just as the upper part of an F major 7. You see that if I put the F on the bass, again, we are back to the first chord that we were talking about before, the F major 7. So basically what I'm doing, I'm going from F major 7, embellishment, C, C6, or upper part of an F major 7, C sharp diminished 7, D minus 7. So if I apply this to the entire groove, it sounds like this. Now let's see all of these ideas combined together. So obviously you can have fun and find even other embellishments and variations, other chords. And my advice is to actually try this in different keys. This was just an example in C major, but make sure that you train yourself in any key, in different keys, and you try to move these ideas uh, basically in other keys so that you can use different chords. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something more about the R&B playing on guitar. I would love to hear from you. So if you have a question or if you would like me to talk about any specific topic in my next videos, please leave a request, leave a feedback in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to be notified when I release my videos so that you don't miss any video like this one anymore. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to help me reaching out more people, you can like this video and share it with your family and friends. I would really appreciate that. As usual, thank you so much for spending some time watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'll be seeing you next week.